person inside a solid box and there's black and red on the inside and the box is solid so there's no way of getting out the box and you've just got the person stuck in the middle with their hands over their ears and it's to do with being stuck in my head which when I first started used to happen a lot because there's literally nowhere to go in that picture there's no gaps there's no let up it's isolation total isolation flat out I wasn't coping with it really vulnerable <laughs> like really vulnerable it used to just follow me around I think I had so much going on in my head that I kind of felt like a bit like an avalanche so like you'd say one thing and the rest would follow but it was all a massive jumble it was all there was no sense and there was no reason to any of it and I couldn't pick out the different aspects of it so I think it's just something that I grew up with and you know I was kind of adamant that I wouldn't trust anyone with this stuff and a group I found really difficult really really hard just because it was letting other people in it was out of my control at what they thought about the pictures and what I was saying so I tried to tone it down quite a lot it took me a really long time it was kind of ironic because when they first told me about doing MBT I had to make a decision whether to go to uni or do MBT and I chose the MBT and I was like this is my last resort so it's not like I came into the therapy really against it but even that wasn't enough to kind of let everyone in probably out of all the artwork I've done this is one of the ones that sticks out the most there's a lot of black and it's someone standing on the edge of a cliff looking into blackness having dark skies above and the cliff is really solid but so is the space underneath the cliff so it's pretty bleak I think we worked out that this must have been around the time they took the overdose because I don't remember any specific drawings that I did around that time or building up to it but and I don't know it just seems a bit of a, a bit of an impossible place to be and it, and it kind of makes me sad to look at it because that's not a happy picture I'm stuck on the edge of a cliff and the way things are going I'm going to end up in this darkness like it's totally consuming there's, there's no gaps for air in it there's no little lifelines hanging around anywhere so like I might be standing on solid ground here but literally you take two steps and you're in this I'm not even convinced I probably told you guys exactly what was going on I have a suspicion that I probably talked around it and that's that's kind of sad as well I wasn't frightened one of the main things I remember about that time I was not scared one bit it was just this is what's going to happen and so be it so I think the fact that I wasn't frightened now rings massive alarm bells and it's like when that kind of calmness comes in because if you look at it it's I you know it's horrible to look at but it's fairly calm there's no things jutting out and I know now to that that is what I need to look out for when it gets to a point where it's no longer scary that is that is when I need to do something I've got better at um, putting my hands up and going no I need I need help I'm much better at it this was quite a lot later on and there's four whirlwinds on a red sky that are really grounded and there's barbed wire on the whirlwinds as well if you look really closely it was later on in therapy when I was realising that, in fact, my anxiety and stuff wasn't just part of a jumbled mess. It was something of its own entity and it was separate from some other stuff that was going on. And then by realising that, it then made me able to try and talk about it a bit more and to try and pull apart what was going on within that anxiety. So it's not... It's not a picture of the, all the different things that are making up anxiety. Like each whirlwind doesn't have a separate meaning. It's just they're whirlwinds in their own right, and they're separate from like I don't know the other stuff mm -hmm. that's going on. You gave me a kind of light bulb moment to go. Okay, this might be how I'm feeling, but actually I am feeling it. It is valid, but it's not always going to be there. So 
but it kind of gave me that separateness to kind of think okay well this is something in its own right that I can either ignore or I can talk about and try and deal with and all my later ones this one for me was probably the most significant because trusting that you guys were right when you said that you won't always stay like that <laughs> which you were right it's cool I still have trouble even now when I'm in it to think won't last forever but I've got better at going okay well I'll just put up with it until it goes away mm. so I've got much better at when I'm in that space like not looking at the clock but like actively avoiding things where mm. I can track the time or anything like that it is literally you know I don't get anywhere living in my own head so I might as well give another view on it a chance